What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics, and today we got a top 10 of alternative rock gems. It's going to be part one. There's going to be a part two in the near future. Brought to us by friend, longtime supporter, and patron of the channel, and Cat Dub. Thank you, and Cat Dub. Always appreciate you and these awesome lists that you curate. Pre appreciate all the patrons who make this thing go. If you'd like to support us anyway, check out the Patreon link below or the patron link on the end screen. We put up videos every single day. It takes a lot of man hours. We appreciate any support. You would consider. All right, let's get into this. And Cat Dub said, I suppose this playlist could as easily be called Indie Rock Gems, but a number of these bands flirted with major label status, usually before disappearing back into the world of small pop-up labels. All of these performers have had enough success that they had held a certain amount of influence over the subsequent generation of musicians and songwriters. Don't worry, there's nothing too long or dreary on this playlist. Only affable and energetic tracks to give everyone a, light, a lift in the midst of winter. Thank you, as we just Went through a huge freeze where I am at, and the pipes in our house froze for 36 hours. So that was good times, but I digress. Let's jump into the first song. It won't be up on Spotify. It's the only song that's not on Spotify, but we got Ecstasy, and their song Easter Theater was released in 1999. Godfathers of indie rock and alternative rock, Ecstasy were formed in Swindon, England in 1972. They were built around songwriters Andrew Partridge, guitars and vocals, and Colin Molding, bass, vocals, and they remained hugely influential. Easter Theaters from the album Apple Venus, Volume 1, in 1999. Uh, one of the quotes that we found, due to poor management, Ecstasy never received a share of profits from record sales, of which there were millions, nor from touring revenue, forcing them into debt throughout the 80s and 90s. You know, guys, in the history of music, this happens so often. It's insane. You'll see groups who and are artists who have million selling records, win Grammys, all these things, and they're, they're broke. They don't have any money at all. It's, it's a horrible thing. Uh, this was the lead single, according to Andy Partridge, the lyrics were an attempt to match a muddy ascending chord progression. There's a little melodic figure at the beginning, which I thought sounded medieval and earthy, combined with placid, droning, high keyboard chords, which sound like you're floating. So it just suggested floating over a land. He considered Easter Theater one of the few, quote, perfect songs of his career feeling that he had exercised a lot of those kind of Lennon and McCartney, Bacharach and David, Brian Wilson type ghosts out of my system by doing all that. I just thought that was a, uh, that's a pretty powerful quote right there. It's the first time joining us. The music will not be in the video, but it will be in a Vimeo link below. I'm going to have the lyrics up as always. All right. Wow. Easter Theater Ecstasy. What a, what a song, man. I don't know if there's biblical allusions in there, but I mean, for me as a Christian, it seems like there is a little bit, but this is really just about a tremendous soundscape, right? This song just sounds fantastic, like intricate, well-produced. Like, what a song. I mean, I'm not really going to go into the breakdown of the lyrics, you know, but stage left, stage right, it, and then kind of little, almost a little call and response uh, in there with the way they did it. You know, Andrew Partridge is on the vocals, but we got Dave Gregory on the Mellotron acoustic and keyboard programming, which were very important on there. And of course, Colin Molding on bass and backing vocals. You had a trumpet on there by Steve Sidwell. I mean, that song was... Uh, it was fantastic, man. I mean, it just had so much going on. Um, the vocal effects, I just thought all of it was great. So a great way to start this list off. Next up, we got Stay the Little Mix by the Blue Nile, released in 1984. Uh, Cat Dub said the Blue Nile is a Scottish art pop band from Glasgow, Scotland, formed in about 1981. Technically, they have made it in, onto major labels, but they've never really improved upon their status as a cult band and so keep changing labels. The band members have also gained a reputation for their avoidance of publicity, their idiosyncratic dealings with the recording industry, and the perfectionism and slow work rate, which has resulted in the release of just four albums since the group's formation in 1981. Stay the Little Mix by the Blue Nile. Wow, what a song, man. I, I tell you what, in order to tell two songs in this, I always pick my favorites at the end. This one's going to be tough because this song was absolutely fantastic, too. And he's, he's some abstract lyrics for, you know, a little while in there, but he's trying to get her to stay. You know, he's just kind of trying to tell her he'll basically do whatever and, and that they could work. But the soundscape, while not as intricate as our first track with Ecstasy, is still pretty intricate. And just kind of uh, that repeating almost synth riff that they were putting in there is just uh, is almost mesmerizing, right? You're like, all right, let's go. But I mean, I... I thought that was fantastic. I never even heard of the Blue Nile. Now up to St. Etienne and the track Erica America from Fairfax High in 1998, the fourth studio album. They're an English pop band from London, formed in 1990, 
Their music has appeared in many television shows and films. I've come across them. Maybe they're in a previous top 10 list. I don't remember, but I don't think we've done anything with them other than that. Erica America, uh, the star of this of the vocals, Sarah Cracknell, the lead singer, just it, it almost, and it's three songs in, they're almost hypnotic, right? The beat, the melody, it's almost hypnotic in there. Erica America, I didn't know what to expect. I thought, I thought, uh, I thought the lyrics might be controversial some, but I mean, it's just Sarah's just not feeling the town that she's in and the girls there. And she just wants to go out. Erica, let's go out tonight. Staying out to the morning light. Erica, let's go out tonight. Everything's going to be all right. And then Diamond Joe took her watch and stereo and tired of their small town games. Whistle a tune. I got to see Jane. Yeah. Read the stars of an area girl, Aries girl, wear the crown in another world. She's got to get out of there. And she needs Erica to go out with her so they can kind of forget their troubles for the night. I think we've all, we've all been in that situation with the, needing someone, whether it's an Erica or someone else to go out with this. So uh, I like that one. I probably didn't like it as well as the previous two, but that's not, that's not uh, throwing any shade at it for sure. Next up, you see it below. We got the great Elliot Smith. We got Baby Britain from the XO album in 1998, his fourth studio album. And Kat says Elliot Smith was an American singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist. He passed away in 2003. Got quite a bit of Elliot Smith up here. It's one of Trey's favorite artists. Uh, we got the album reaction that uh, him and I did together. And in that album reaction, I tell the story of Elliot's mysterious death. So if you want to know more about that, I mean, you can obviously Google it or watch my explanation of it because it is uh, it is crazy, but that is another story. We've also got a top 10 of him up. This is the second single. Didn't chart in the US, but went to 55 in the UK. On this one, you got Rob Schnapp on guitars, but Elliot's playing. We've got vocals, piano, bass, drums, mandolin, and organ. Elliot was an incredibly talented artist. This album is very well thought of. Um, and I don't remember if I listened to it for album draft or not, so I'm not going to remember this song, but I think Trey might have had this album, I think, high in his top five on our album draft. So if you haven't watched those yet, go check them out. Baby Britain, Elliot was a fantastic songwriter. Struggled with a lot of different things. I think it's kind of shine out on here. There's a lot to these lyrics, right? So I'm not going to break them all down perfectly. There's a ton to them just in their hidden means. But Baby Britain means the United States. And uh, he's talking about for himself. Uh, he fights problems with bigger problems. So in other words, alcohol, drugs, that sort of stuff. You're having an issue. So you want to escape from it. But the way you escape from it causes yourself a bigger issue. And that happens to so many other people. And then, you know, he's throwing a little shade at the U.S. How, you know, the U.S. I live in the U.S. Uh, how, you know, when I say we're the greatest country in the world, but there's nothing to really back that up. Uh, that's kind of a bold statement that you know, we're just taught from a very young age. But it's like, are we really? I don't know. That's a, that's a conversation for another time. But uh, we got a lot of problems, just like everybody does. But uh, yeah, Elliot's voice, really nice. The arrangement on here, really nice. But if you listen to the song, you would think, you know, if you didn't pay attention to the lyrics, you'd think it's an upbeat song because, I mean, it has a nice melody. Everything's good. But you realize it's a very, uh, I don't know if I want to say a dark, I guess I would say a little bit of a dark song. It's a difficult song, but uh, really well done. Next up, we got People Got a Lot of Nerve from Nico Case, Middle Side Clone album, 2009, her fifth studio album. Nico Case is an American singer-songwriter, member of the Canadian indie rock group, The New Pornographers, who appear on tons of my album drafts uh, and honorable mentions and, and on a list. She uh, writes songs in many different genres, so it's never been easy to classify. Her lyrics often refer to the natural world and wildlife in a metaphorical manner. This was the lead single from that fifth studio album. Nico Case, Man Eater. I just really like her voice, right? The second it came on, I'm like, yeah. Another great arrangement. And Cat Dub's done a fantastic job on the first half of this list, just picking songs that have great melody. The song itself, I guess, is about how we keep animals in captivity and then are surprised when they attack. It's like she even talks about a very famous, uh, a very famous attack of Shamu, the killer whale at, at SeaWorld, which are parks that we have here in America. And you know, they just kill a whale show where people ride them and they do all this stuff. And and uh, she's talking about how one of the People riding it got pinned to the bottom and uh, Shamu wouldn't let them go. And because, you know, if we call them killer whales, man, what do you expect? These animals are predators and we keep them for our own amusement. So, uh, yeah, an interesting topic for a song, but it sounded really good. Next up, we have Matthew Sweet, his song I've Been Waiting from the Girlfriend album in 1991, his third studio album. And Matthew Sweet is an American alternative rock power pop singer, songwriter, musician who was part of the 1980s Athens, Georgia music renaissance, along with bands like R.E.M. and the B-52s. I love one of those and can't stand the other one. And I won't, won't let you know which one's which. He wrote this album right after his divorce, I found. So that could uh, 
that does usually skew the lyrics a little bit one direction. Matthew Sweet, I've been waiting. First off, you had that jangly guitar, REM inspired, all the way back to the birds inspired, right? So I really enjoyed that, but they had a nice guitar solo in the middle of that too. But the song was upbeat, right? This is more about a new person that he's found and he's kind of showing his uh, devotion and attraction to her. And I guess she must be younger because it starts out with, you know, you told me I wasn't so old and at the end you told me I'm not so old. So he's turning to new beginnings, right? I thought this could have been a jaded song with just coming off a divorce, which is totally understandable, but a very pleasant song. The melody on it was obviously fantastic and just uh, just great musicianship. And I really like Matthew's voice. All right, we got four songs left. Two of them by artists, I don't know. This is one of those two. This is The Day by Ivy from Apartment Life in 1997. Second studio album. Ivy was an American indie pop band composed of Andy Chase, Adam Schlesinger, also of the band Fountains of Wayne, and Dominique Durand, a French student studying in New York. They were active between 1994 and 2012. This is the third single. It was included in the 1998 American comedy film, There's Something About Mary. I used to love that show. I don't know if it stands up, but many thought it sounded similar to the Smiths. All right, let's check it out. All right, Ivy, this is the day. I like Dominique Durant. I like her vocals. Sounds really good. Um, she never played in a band before. She was actually convinced by the other two guys to uh, to come and sing, did some demos, and then they took her on. So I was doing a little research on the group. Uh, they, they took her in, and she was the, the lead vocalist. But uh, this song itself, I mean, it has such a pleasant sound. Once again, it's a theme, right? All the melodies on here are so fantastic. If you didn't listen to the lyrics, you would think this is just this nice, pleasant, upbeat song. It's probably why it was used in This Is Something About Mary, because when I read the lyrics, I think it's about someone being abused. And so it's got very serious lyrics masked in this great melody. Sooner or later, she feels the morning come. Isn't it safe? Her dark thoughts all gone. What a sensation. She's made it through one more tomorrow, raising up her eyes to a brand new sky. She knows the truth at last. She's never coming back. And then you get in that, oh, she'll be gone so many years. She'll be gone melting away. She'll be gone. This is the day. Someone's walking up to the bedroom door, hear him knocking. She knows what it's for. She's at the window wondering why there's no one to save her, raising up her eyes to a brand new sky. She knows it's the truth at last. She's never coming back. And it is. Go through that. So that's what I take out of this. So a very uh, serious, and I could be wrong. Let me know if you know what this song's about. I couldn't find it anywhere. But that's kind of my interpretation of it, but a really good song. Next up, we got the great Bob Mould, See a Little Light from Workbook in 1989. His debut solo album. He's an American singer, songwriter, producer, best known for fronting the bands, of course, Husker Du in the 80s and Sugar in the 90s, written by Bob about his optimism after the breakup of his previous band, Husker Du. It features relatively upbeat lyrics, that'll be good, and light arrangement highlighted by clean electric guitar and cello. Released as a debut single, charted on alternative charts in America, and served as a title for Bob's memoir, so he obviously thought highly of it. Bob said, quote, about this song, this just fell out of the sky, coming out of the breakup of Husker Du and a year on the farm in Pine City, north of Minneapolis, writing nonstop, mostly by myself. That was one of the brighter moments of that writing process. I don't know if I was inspired by a sunny day or one of the chickens on the farm, but what an optimistic song given how isolated I was and how shocking life after Husker Du was for me. I was living a singular, solitary existence. I wouldn't say my relationship at the time was hopeless. It was pretty far out of reach uh, that anything positive would come. So I'm seeing a little light, not a ton, just a glimpse of hope. All right, let's go. Wow, see a little light, Bob Mole. That this the soundscape, the arrangement, the jangly guitar again. That was so freaking good, man. And he's basically just telling this this uh, this significant other, this lover, I guess. Listen, there's music in the air. I heard your voice coming from somewhere, but look how much we've grown. Well, I guess I should have known. As the years go by, they take their toll on you. That just made me laugh. Like, yeah, that's for sure. Think of all the things we wanted to do, but they didn't, right? And all the words we said yesterday, well, that's a long time ago. You think I'd really go now. Are you waiting? I know why. You're already saying goodbye. Are you ready? I know why. Because he's finally going to go do it. I see a little light. I know you will. I see it in your I can see it in your eyes. I know you still care. But if you want me to go, you should just say so. Are you waiting? I know why. You're already ready saying goodbye. I know why. So uh, just, I mean, what a melody. Right. And I, and I love Bob's voice. Just so well done. We got two songs left. We're to the other artist. I didn't know when I mentioned there were four left and two. I didn't know. We got Ocean Blue with Mercury from the Sarah Lillian, Sarah Lillian, Sarah Lillian. We'll go with that album in 1991. Uh, the Ocean Blue is an American indie pop band formed in Hershey, Pennsylvania in 1986. Their members were still in high school when they signed a three album deal in 1988 with Sire Records. Wow. Mercury. The Ocean Blue, what, what a song, man, that repeating riff. And once again, 
it's a theme here, right? A pleasant melody song gets you going. If you're not listening to it, I mean, the lyrics of it are just uh, heartbreaking, right? Quietly, almost elusively, almost invisibly. I found that I, for a moment, had slipped away. Ripped in two, then pasted back again, then crumpled up inside, then tossed aside. You know that. It feels so bad. Oh, Mercury, oh, Mercury. Happened once, then it happened twice, then it happened thrice, and now a fourth. You know what? Did you know that? And then repeats these. So uh, this guy is just, uh, he's going through it over and over and over again in his life. But if you listen to the melody, it's like, man, this is a... It's an upbeat song, but what what a great song, man, from the ocean blue. Now we're up to our final track. I don't think these are necessarily in order. These are just 10 songs. I didn't really cover that at the, at the start. Ancat didn't say, but usually on an Ancat Dubs list, they're just, they're 10 songs, right? You don't have to argue over placement. They're just 10 great songs. We got the House Martins, The World's on Fire, from the album The People Who Grin Themselves to Death, 1987, their second and final studio album. The House Martins were an English indie rock group formed in Hull, England, who were active in the 80s. The band managed three top 10 albums, six top 20 singles in the UK. Uh, of course, Paul Heaton is on here on vocals. Uh, we have a top 10 list up that features the House Martins and, and a few other things that Trey did that has a, had a great response, but I've never listened to anything from the House Martins, so let's check it out. The House Martins, the world's on fire. A little different musically than a lot of the other songs on here, and it just... Man, it just sticks in your head, right? It just keeps, it just keeps playing in my head. I thought it was, uh, it was so good. Basically, talking about some Sunday church thing and not going to church, and you know, what a beautiful morning, what a beautiful day, what a sickening feeling. It took this long to make it. Now we're throwing it away. The world's on fire. Now I told you not to play with the world's on fire. I said, look out, church, the flames grow higher. The world's on fire. That call and response and the harmonizing on the response just makes this stick in your head. And I'm a devout Christian, but I don't attend church on Sundays. And I mean, last time I checked, my house is not on fire, so I'm going to be all right. So thank you to Paul Heaton and the boys for that one. Now we come to the point where I pick my favorite tracks, and I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes this is easy. Sometimes this is really difficult. This one's going to be really, really difficult uh, because I really like this kind of music. Like, this music's great. I just, I totally jive with it. Let's see. I'm trying to, I tried to eliminate stuff, and I don't know how good a job it is. I actually liked all 10 of these songs, like, no doubt. Honorable mentions, Baby Britain, Elliot Smith, I've Been Waiting, Matthew Sweet, and Mercury by Ocean Blue. My faves, See a Little Light, Bob Mould, Stay, The Little Mix by the Blue Nile, and Easter Theater by Ecstasy, the first song that was on this list, which there was a quote I didn't share with you. Andrew Partridge, Andy Partridge said this was his favorite Ecstasy song. He said, quote, that ticks a lot of boxes. I think we find climbed on a podium level with the Beatles with that number. If that's not too immodest to say, I also loved arranging the orchestral ideas. And I think all of that stuff is what made that song really work for me. But what a great list. And Cat Dub said that was only part one. I can't wait for part two. This is fantastic. Let me know what you thought of this list uh, in the comments below. If you haven't already, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. Until next time, guys, I will see you.